Welcome, Ali. Thank you. So firstly, congratulations for surviving year 11. You've made it through, start of year 12. Um, I'd love to hear, what was the year 11 journey like for you? It was a lot of ups and downs. Like initially you start, you're like, oh, it's, it's kind of a breeze. There's not much work. And then your first assessment week comes and like everything starts piling on. And then you're like, oh, this is, this is what, what sen being a senior is meant to be. And then you get through that and then you're kind of like, oh, it's a breeze again. And then, yeah, so pretty much a kind of boom and bust cycle. But that was before Pathfinder. And then I actually got my study in order. So, <laughs> so it made some changes for you. <laughs> yeah. What would you say as you started year 11 and you were you know, starting the year has been um, your biggest you know, challenge that you were facing in year 11? Consistent revision. 100% consistent revision. Because I just think, oh, I've learnt it, I don't need to learn it again, I can move on. And then I get to the test and I'm like, I know nothing. I should have done revision throughout the, the year instead of the night before. Yep, definitely. And I guess that's something that in year 10 you can really get away with, isn't it? And then year 11 it sort of surprises you just given the volume and the complexity of some of the content uh, yeah. that you're needing to learn. So constant revision was a sort of major challenge. Um, uh, what subjects did you take during uh, for year 11? I had extension 1 English, extension 1 Maths, Physics, Accelerate Chemistry, Ancient History and Legal Studies. So, so there's a solid bit of a mix yeah. in there. What was the subject or subjects that you found the most difficult or struggled with the most? I didn't really struggle too much with any of my subjects. It was more of a matter of me um, revising and putting the work into the practice papers that was the problem when year 11 started. So in other words, yeah, this is less so for you a challenge of like conceptually understanding stuff. It was more just the study and doing the work around it. Yeah. <laughs> that was the bigger issue. Now, um, one of the things that I know you were doing across year 11 is you've been part of the year 11 Pathfinder program. Yeah. Um, which has, you know, mentoring workshops, intensives. Now, I was, uh, lucky enough to be your mentor. Now, what would we do in sessions together? You know, like what, what did mentoring look like? So it was strategies, because there's also the intensives where they, there's like a set program. You sometimes ran it, Daniel sometimes ran it, sometimes other mentors popped in. But that was like a set program with each with a focus and strategies, while the mentoring sessions were a lot more personalized and like you tried to see what I needed help with and then we'd work on things that I needed help with. And then we'd also start projects like the, per, like the personal project. So awesome! So we did a couple of different things. Maybe to dive into one or two of these, um, you know, what were some of the strategies and things that we were trying to talk about and put in place? Well, the first one that I still remember was Trello. <laughs> so pretty much, Trello is an app where you can create to-do lists, and you got me onto it. And I remember the first, the session after you got me onto it, you were just looking at my Trello and, and like your face was just saying, what is this? <laughs> and then you spent like, I think it was like 10 or 15 minutes just going through and organizing it all and still works pretty efficiently. <laughs> so in other words, really trying to put in some, some sort of tools, right? And, and sort of things in place to support your productivity. What else did we sort of unpack in terms of some of the strategies and things in the mentoring sessions? Probably another important one for me was accountability and like having an accountability group and having set times like teaching friends is first very good for your feedback and secondly it's also a way to stay accountable of your study and then your parents, your teachers, your friends, your mentor and another really important one that I uh, was changing environment. like taking all your distractions away, phone in another room, cleaning up the room, cold turkey on your computer to make sure that you're not doing anything you're not meant to, just stuff like that. Cool, so we've got, I guess, a couple of big things right in there. You've got um, environmental change, making sure that you had the right environment in place to support the work that you were needing to do. Um, you know, we had some of the tools that you then were also needing in terms of actually like, you know, managing your to-do lists and, and, and whatnot. And then on top of all of that, the accountability to then ensure that the work was yeah. happening, basically, given that, that your challenge was a lack of consistent work. Yeah. Um, awesome. What was the best piece of advice uh, your mentor gave you um, across the sessions? Use Trello, <laughs> if I had to say it. 
Also, don't try and overwork yourself was probably the other one. Because, you know, there's some people out there like that I kind of looked up to, like David Goggins. He was like, you work until you're dead, and then you keep working. And then uh, it was more just like doing something that's sustainable for you and trying to make sure that both you're mentally, physically, and academically in the best place at, uh, at all times. Which is so true, because if you're not, A, you're not going to perform at your best anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's so critical. You know, one of the things that, that happens in year 11 is, of course, the end of year 11 exams. And um, for a lot of students, they can be a little bit of a challenge. It's probably the high stress point of the year. I don't know if they were for you. Um, what did you do? Like, how, how did the workshops and the intensives help you prepare for your end of year 11 exams as part of Pathfinder? There was a lot on structuring your notes, on practice questions, 10% less time when you're doing practice papers. Um, also just kind of giving me a kick to get me started <laughs> and um, study timetables, the planning ahead because in the workshops you do the 10 week plan and then you plan your like forward study so you're ahead of the class and getting me to start early on my revision was probably the biggest one because I was done with my like my ancient history notes for example I was done I think a week or a week and a half before the actual exam I pretty much done my study and then I was just chill and revise. So in other words, it just really helped, as you once said, kick you up the bum a little to do a bit of that early work, yeah. but then also just help you scaffold out when you were needing to do what. Um, uh, what did that mean? Did that mean, like, how, did you feel confident when you went into your end of 11 exams as a result? Like, how, how were you feeling? I felt pretty confident for everything besides physics. But that's also because we have a physics teacher who likes to set us painful problems. So in other words, there was nothing you could even really do for that one. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think anyone in my grade was feeling confident going into physics. But um, yeah, it just helped me feel a lot more relaxed. I wasn't as stressed as I saw some other people. There's always a factor of stress because it pushes you. I felt it was much easier to actually get the work done coming up to it instead of like, I have so much to do. What, what do I do, that kind of stuff. And overall, better experience than year 10, if I had to rate it. That's a positive <laughs> upward trajectory. It's what we want to hear. Uh, that's awesome. Um, what, um, what was your study like before being in the Pathfinder program? And what has it looked like after? My study was almost non-existent. It was like cramming the week before was probably my study before Pathfinder. After Pathfinder, um, it's changed over time. Initially, it was more of like, English has more or less stayed the same with practice essays and handing those in. Um, same with math, but my legal and ancient, they were initially more of, I'm going to make really long documents of going by syllabus stop points, and then I'll just revise those. And I, uh, I remember one day at home, I was highlighting what was important, and I ended up highlighting like a whole page, because it was just, it was all I needed and I couldn't really differentiate what I didn't and what I did need. And like the 80-20 from Pathfinder helped me with that. And then also now, now at this point, it's more like flashcards and then transition moments. So I barely actually do any study for ancient or legal at home. And it's just all on the train, in the gym, walking home or walking to school, that kind of thing. That's when I get my study done. So. It's good to hear using those transition moments. Definitely really cool. What would you, what would be your top three tips for students that are starting year 11? So now knowing what you now know, experiencing and you know, successfully getting through year 11, if you could give a new year 11 student, you know, some advice that you think would help them set themselves up for success for year 11, what would it be? Three tips. The most important one would be to structure your study. So that's both studying ahead and studying the work you get. So having a plan to study ahead, but also staying on top of your work and like, oh, it's fine, I won't do the math exercise today, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow becomes the day after and the next week. And then you're coming up to the exam and you're like, oh, I have like a list of like 20 math exercises I haven't done. Um, another one would be to use flashcards or uh, a really good other option is traffic lighting the syllabus and then cutting that up and carrying that with you. Daniel's, that's one of Daniel's examples. And the third would be to stay active. Because in quarantine, there's periods where like I wasn't really doing anything. 
and then everything started dropping down and I was like what I'm just not not working out why is my study dropping and your productivity decreases your energy decreases and you just feel worse overall if you don't so awesome very true three good tips um, what's been the number one habit you've changed in year 11 that's had the biggest impact on your life and results not wasting time so pretty much that that's coming from having a structured study and that's made the biggest impact because even if like anyone downloads screen time on their phone or like has screen time already default on their phone pops it open they're like ah seven hours of screen time in a day <laughs> that's not healthy stuff like that um, and just having like commitments to reach even and setting accountability for those commitments to make sure like oh it's fine I'll just do it later doesn't happen that helps reduce the amount of time you waste increases your productivity and also scrolling through in scrolling through social media is actually bad for your brain so it also helps with that so in other words what I'm hearing is that the number one habit seems like actually it's been a question of reducing distraction. Yeah, I guess it could be summed up. <laughs> that's a much better way of summing it up. Yeah, let's go with that. Reducing distraction. Said that from the start. So the Pathfinder program has got three core objectives, right? It's to lift results, find direction and stand out. Um, how has the program helped you lift your results over year 11? In content heavy subject like ancient history, I got, I ended up coming first in both the final exam and overall in the course. And I feel like the amount of study that I did leading up to it and the work that I've done uh, is pretty much due to Pathfinder. And getting into Extension 2 Maths, again, due to Pathfinder, um, getting above 80% in my last legal exam was pretty much Pathfinder study again. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty much, I think all my results have lifted. Well done, that's so, so great to hear, Ali, that's awesome. And the second part is, you know, finding direction. So how has Pathfinder over the course of year 11 helped you get more direction on where you want to go? I had no idea whatsoever when I first came in. And then first mentoring session, you were like, OK, we're going to start looking at UNSW. Because I was like, ah, co-op could be interesting. And you're like, let's look at it. And then we waited out. We're like, it's a stricter pathway. You might not have time for an exchange. There's no really, not really time to join a startup in contrast doing like a scholarship and double degree and things like that and that really just helped me get clarity on what kind of pathway I wanted to take. Also the career Q&A's were pretty good. Um, yeah, if I had, I'd say Vincent and Dush, if I had to say, the two people I interacted the most with following those, uh, Vincent just economics and kind of a genius if I'm being honest and also websites education that sort of thing and then Dush is like an AI scientist and he like talked to me quite a bit about that and I'm like oh so this is what it's actually like it's not like oh you just click a button and then everything happens and you have the new Siri or something and so just for context these career Q&A's where we bring in professionals from all sorts of industries and you get an opportunity to ask questions and learn from them so what you're saying is um, you got to chat to a couple and, and really so, sort of learn uh, from these guys as well, which is really cool. Um, and final question, at least here, I'll have a couple more for you after. Um, how, how has Pathfinder helped you sort of stand out over the longer term for opportunities? It's helped me, like, I actually have time to, do, to take opportunities now because before I had a pretty tight schedule, but that was because I was wasting a lot of time. And then Pathfinder's made everything, like all my study, and like a lot of things more efficient and also waste less time so I have more time to do things now um, yeah I ended up becoming a prefect so uh, I have time for that that's a pretty good one and yeah it's mostly just freeing up a bunch of time and encouraging you to take things that will bolster your your CV which is pretty much LinkedIn at this point awesome and I know part of that has been starting a personal project yeah. Um, what is your personal project? Um, yeah, uh, it's a it's a podcast where we interview pretty much not really industry, just experts on the topics in gen in general, and it, the topics include balancing life, uh, studying, whether you should even go to university, pros and cons of that, um, work, and parallel pathways, and yeah.
Cool. And so, and the point of that is because, uh, you know, you're, this is for, for other students, is that correct? Yes. And yeah, I had no idea before I started what I was doing with any of them. And I feel like it would be really good if other people could have a resource that they could access to kind of look at it and be like, oh, this is the sort of thing I should try and do. This is what's being suggested. If it works, great. If it doesn't, there's a bunch more up there that you could use. So. And did you know anything about podcasts before you started your personal project? I knew they needed a mic. <laughs> <laughs> so great. In other words, a, a whole lot. <laughs> Joe Rogan wasn't the best example, you know. His is pretty much a show at this point. Yeah. But yeah. So the point is, though, which is great, is that it was something that you really didn't know much about. You had to learn about it along the way. Um, you've been doing it while you've been in year 11. So you've had to juggle it with study. It was developing while I was in your lab. That's right. And what, what's the goal with the podcast? Like, why did you start it? What's the goal with the personal project, really? Well, for mine, is just to help, like, other students. Because I was confused. I, you never really notice you're confused until you're no longer confused. And you look back and you're like, I had no clue what I was doing. And that's kind of the point I'm at now. So I thought that I'd try and help other students as well. And just try and make something that's useful for them. Couple of final questions. One, what was uh, what's been the best thing about your mentoring sessions this year? The best thing is that you seem to know everything. <laughs> like I have any question, and you're like, "Oh, there's a report on this. I'm gonna send you this report, or oh, there's this link you can look at," and just it's kind of you're pretty relatable as well, because you did go to a selective school and you like your sports and you had to balance everything. And I, I feel like that's like really helped me get everything under control and also made these sessions pretty enjoyable. Awesome, that's good to hear. And um, just as a, a overall, what's been the best thing overall about the Pathfinder experience? Best thing overall? See, if they were in person, I would say intensives. Well, intensives still the best thing overall because there's just like so much that's given to you and then you can work through it with your mentor. But there's like a lot of new things that are shown to you during the intensives. But also along with that, the mentoring is amazing as well. So yeah, cause it's a lot more personalized. So it kind of depends. I really like both of them. I don't think I'd be able to choose. Cool. And um, any, any final sort of tips or advice for year 11 students that you could share? Start early is probably the, the best one. Don't leave it for too long. Um, there's, a, there's a quote, I think, that came up in the last intensive, which was rockets use up most of their fuel during takeoff. And pretty much if you do start early, the rest of year 11 kind of just becomes a breeze. <laughs> so start early, flash cards, look at strategies you can use like Pomodoro or study groups, teaching a friend, accountability. There's a lot out there, you just have to look for it and yeah. Any other, anything else you want to say? Just try your best, but don't sacrifice anything for it. So try and keep up with your uh, co-curriculars, try and keep up with your sport, and also try and keep up with your academics. And the HSC is not the be all end all. There's a bunch of other ways which we've looked at. Just make sure that you're not becoming unhealthy while you're through your senior journey because that'll affect you the most.